The Newport Folk Festival. It's the place where Bob Dylan famously went electric in 1965. And so much music history was made since. It's founding in 1959. These days, summer festivals are everywhere, dominating the music scene. But as Jeffrey Brown found out this past weekend, Newport not only survives, but once again thrives. There were big names on stage, younger stars like the band Fleet Foxes. And feel a stone, a wet and warm night, ten miles away. And old masters like John Prine. My Mexican home. Fell in love with you. There was also a bit of this from comedian Megan Mullally and her musical partner Stephanie Hunt. What do you call it? Punk vaudeville, maybe? Punk. They don't have like the Newport Punk Vaudeville Festival <laughs> yet. It's yeah. not a genre Next just year. yet. For the most part, though, traditions were upheld. Their folk festival. Well, this is, we're playing folk music for you. <laughs> Capital F. And parents um, pleased. I've certainly made my dad very proud. It's like, I never thought my daughter would sing in Newport. The Newport Folk Festival was three days of sun and wind, sailboats and seagulls, held in a 19th century fort named for President John Adams on a gorgeous setting on a spit of land in Rhode Island's Narragansett Bay. It's a place that cultivates its history and aura. Executive producer Jay Sweet. The one thing if you'll notice about this festival when you walk around is there's nothing but music. We don't have Ferris wheels, it's nothing but music and we jam quite a bit of music into a very small spot. And everyone wants to play here, even though the pay is far less than for other bigger festivals. Remarkably less. Remarkably less. Yeah, to the, to the point where it's almost embarrassing. And, you know, to the artist's credit, they completely understand. I mean, we are about as transparent as you can get. Uh, and, uh, what, what, what do you say? Well, no, what I'm saying is, you know, most of these artists play for 10 times what we pay them. Yeah. And they still come. And the audience does too, drawn in part by the intimacy. Relatively small, some 10,000 people spread out over four stages, this festival sells out before anyone knows who's performing. Music promoter George Ween founded the festival in 1959, five years after starting the Newport Jazz Festival. It's like a time warp. When I see the people coming in, they're the same faces, the same people, different generation. It's the same feeling, the same yeah. peace and love feeling without saying peace and love. They don't dress alike because the dress is different, but they, they, they respond alike. And that's, that's a fascinating thing. At 91, Ween gets around these days in his lean green Ween machine golf cart and serves as chairman of the Newport Festivals Foundation, now set up as a nonprofit. I don't want to leave, man. I love it. I mean, it keeps my head going. My mind is as clear as ever. I can't walk, but that's who cares? Who has to walk? Pete Seeger, who helped Ween start the festival, is honored at an indoor stage series titled For Pete's Sake. Scream till I'm blue. Then I'm better than you. The spirit of 60s protest music is all around. The late greats commemorate some of Newport's legendary performers now gone. The folk festival itself almost died several times, but today the audience skews young. Attracted by a new generation of musicians who gladly stretch any remaining bonds of folk music. What do you call what you're doing? Something between a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. Yeah. My favorite compliment is that people always say, I don't like country music, but I like you. 34-year-old Nashville-based Nikki Lane is an up-and-coming singer-songwriter working hard to make it on the festival scene throughout the year. I know like at festivals like Coachella, they're doing 150,000 people a weekend. If you aren't playing something that can necessarily be played on radio, and you're, how do you market yourself? How do you reach the masses? These festivals are kind of serving you up, and it's kind of survival of the fittest. This one compared to, uh, you know, those 150,000, yeah. this is like a little boutique sort yeah. of place. I but suppose. that's, I imagine, where if you look at the people that are coming here, I would imagine that almost all of the bookers for festivals have spent time here, if anything, figuring out 
what to book next. This is, to me, the biggest tastemaker. Are you at home out? Even if you're now a headliner here, like Fleet Foxes, you know the feeling. Lead singer Robin Pecknold. Well, the first time we played here in 2009, they can't have paid us that much, but I remember um, the experience was great, and the um, I'm, I'm sure they paid us like what we deserve to be paid, but um, <laughs> whatever minimal amount that was. <laughs> but, but the experience was amazing, and then and it was a great show, and you know you you do get you do get put in front of an audience that maybe doesn't know who you are, or when you're when you're on your way when you're on your way up, and I'm sure that you know half the people out there probably don't know who we who we are tonight, and. Oh yeah, but you're here, you're back here as a headliner now. I would come here not knowing. I'd buy a ticket to this without knowing who who uh, anybody was playing before yeah. they even announced the lineup. Thirty-year-old British musician Michael Kiwanuka calls his music psychedelic folk soul. He came here on the heels of major new exposure through the soundtrack of the hit TV series, Big Little Lies. Did you ever want it? And at Newport, he was a clear favorite of fans yeah. and other musicians. I try and work on my career and want to, want to be around like for a while like other singers that inspire me. And so I'm not like a mega pop star, but <laughs> I do my thing. And, but I think the thing that's really important to hear that's good is that it's music lovers that come and like music lovers that play. So if you get to play in Newport, it means that there's something in your music that is honest or raw or has come from the heart. And I think ever since a young age, that's what I've been trying to do or been inspired by. There was one old time rock star here, Roger Waters of Pink Floyd. He made a surprise acoustic appearance to help honor the great American folk singer, John Prine. Waters, as much as anyone here, felt Newport's past and present spirit. It's about music, and, but it's also about love, but it's also about protest, because there is a strong tradition in, in American folk music. And get them, get, get musicians started. Enough with Kim Kardashian's bum, you know, and Katy Perry or whoever, and all that bubblegum nonsense. And there are, there are a lot of young, committed musicians who are desperate to find a platform. Once again, Newport provided that kind of platform, continuing its long and storied history. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown at the Newport Folk Festival. And you can watch more performances from the Newport Folk Festival, including one from British singer-songwriter Michael Kiwanuka. That's on our Facebook page. Facebook.com slash NewsHour.